I think we split this up so that uh, I, I'm talking about the most afferent pathways and then we're going to efferent pathways and then Reese is going to talk about um, like intramuscular issues. Um, so I'm talking about supranuclear, nuclear, and intranuclear causes of diplopia. Oops. So just to kind of to be aware, supranuclear processes mostly involve binocular processes such as pursuit, saccades, VOR, gaze holding, fixation, and optokinetic nystagmus. Um, really the only um, uh, non-binocular processes for gents that's most, that, these are, uh, that these supranuclear processes are most responsible for. Um, so some causes of dipopia that are supranuclear um, are rare, but these are the, the ones that are known, skew deviation, ocular tilt reaction, alternating skew, convergence, insufficient, uh, insufficiency, divergence, insufficiency, and thalamic isodeviation, which some of these kind of fit in with each other. Uh, so skew deviation, it's defined as a vertical misalignment secondary to damage along the otolithic input to vertically acting ocular motor neurons. So this is acquired, it's usually comitant but can be incompetent. Um, and, and just so everyone knows, comitant means that um, it's the, the same amount in every gaze um, and incompetent is when it changes. Uh, it can be central, peripheral, central is much more common. Um, and peripheral is usually caused by damage to the utricle, saccule, or fibers along cranial nerve eight. So ocular tilt, react, uh, tilt reaction is a subtype of skew deviation. The triad includes a combinant skew deviation, head tilts, and ocular torsion. Um, and the torsion is in the same direction as the head tilt. So for example, um, uh, this is, um, if you, there's actually a really good case on Iowa eye rounds if anyone's interested. Um, but this shows that um, if the, uh, the lesion is basically from anywhere on the right side from the utric utricle saccule um, up to the um, pons, uh, it will cause an ipsilateral head tilt. So here there's a right head tilt, um, and then you can see um, on the fundus photographs that there's uh, X cyclotorsion of the right eye and N cyclotorsion of the left eye. So alternating skew deviation is incompetent um, and causes a hypertropia of the abducting eye. So there's a right hypertropia on right gaze that switches to a left hypertropia on left gaze. Um, and the lesion is usually in the cerebellum cer cervicomedullary junction or dorsal midbrain. So convergence insufficiency is usually causes diplopia at near. It's usually a benign finding and does not require f further workup. Um, but it can manifest with extrapyramidal disorders such as Parkinson's or PSP. So like usually you don't need to work up because it's often associated with these other symptoms. And then really the same thing with divergence insufficiency. Um, it's acquired and produces a comitant esodeviation that's greater at distance at near. Um, it's also, again, benign um, if it's found is in isolation, um, but is usually associated with other neurological symptoms um, if it's associated with a midbrain tumor um, or some of these spinal cell cerebellar ata ataxia. Um, convergence spasm. Um, so in older patients, it's um, almost never related to organic disease. Again, can be associated with um, a dorsal midbrain syndrome. Um, and when, ac when acquired can be associated with lower brain stem and cerebellar insults. So a thalamic esodeviation um, is just something that I think we need to know for board. So there can, it's usually associated with a thalamic hemorrhage um, and causes a horizontal strabismus. So nuclear third is extremely rare um, and is composed of bilateral ptosis. Um, it's due to central caudal nucleus of three, um, which uh, innervates both levators. Um, and then you'll get a contralateral superior rectus palsy because each superior rectus is innervated by the contralateral cranial nerve three nucleus. Um, and then you'll obviously have this, the epsilateral medial rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique palsy. So really the, nucle the nuclear fourth and sixth are exceedingly rare, um, almost never happen, and they're kind of, um, they're basically associated with fasciculars. Uh, syndromes, which Conradi will be talking about. But one thing to know about nuclear fourth um, is that the, the fibers cross, so um, basically a right uh, nuclear fourth causes a left uh, fourth palsy. 
and this is almost this again never almost never occurs and uh, Conrad will talk about syndromes with the six so internuclear lesions so these are lesions along the medial longitudinal fasciculus and this is a pathway that connects the sixth nerve nucleus on one side with the medial rectus subnucleus of the third nerve on the contralateral lateral side. And so there's an INO and a one and a half syndrome, and there's also a bilateral INO. So really, um, I mean, in med school, we basically learned that it's um, when there's no adduction, but it's really defined by slowed adduction velocity with saccades in one eye, because they may have full range of motion. So that's important to remember. Um, and they will have gaze of nystagmus in the, ab, the abducting eye. Um, they may have a simultaneous skewed deviation. Um, convergence may or may not be intact, so you can't use that. Um, most common causes are stroke and demyelination. And then just make sure you think about myasthenia in these cases, because um, that can mimic. And um, myasthenia will usually not have um, the nystagmus in the abducting eye, and myasthenia usually will have other associated symptoms. So this just kind of shows the pathway. So um, in, this ca in this case, the, um, so for lesion number one, so that's this, and this is from our um, ophthalmology review book, just I kind of like to use the same pictures over and over again so that it just sticks in my brain. But So the lesion is right here with the, um, the left ML, MLF. Um, so if we're trying to look to the left, um, the cranial, cranial nerve six, a nucleus will fire and we'll get this lateral rectus to move over and simultaneously um, should send a signal over um, to the MLF over here that causes the subnucleus of 3 to um, cause a medial rectus to um, move over to the left as well. But if there's a lesion, then that will happen. And lesion number two is just showing, showing if there's a bilateral INO, which right here you can see um, that this patient is not able to um, adduct with either eye. And here you can see that there's some uh, basically edema um, here with uh, the area where the MLF runs. And then um, this is one and a half syndrome. So basically that is when um, both the abducens nerve and the um, MLF are affected from a larger lesion. So in this, in this case, uh, here we have um, the left cranial nerve 6 firing, so that fires just normally, and then we try to go over to the MLF over here, and that's not functioning. Um, if we want to look to the right, the abducens nucleus is, not, is also affected, so it can't move to the right. Um, and then the pathway over to um, the left MLF is also not working, so you have complete um, paralysis and right gaze. And you can see that with this patient, they, she can't look over to the right at all, um, and she can only um, abduct the left eye. My references and Conrad is up next.